I care not today what the morrow may bring, if sunshine, shadow of rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my troubles in vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting in power, in God His great love. From all who say, from the sheltering heart, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. Those heavens in heaven, that's when we are alive. I'm bravely a burden, and I'm just not as much. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting confiding in His great love. From all who say, from a sheltering arm, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. Our Lord will be fair to this earth some sweet day, the brothers will then all be o'er. The Master so great will lead us away beyond the best heavenly shore. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting confide in His great love. From all who say, from the sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. Amen. Good morning, good morning. It is great to see everyone here. I know we have some visitors and we're glad that you are here and uh, we appreciate the fact that you've chosen to worship with us today. So please give us a chance, as Ken mentioned earlier, to get a chance to meet you before you leave today. Um, just to kind of follow up on um, Zane when he was up here a minute ago and I thought it was very fitting because uh, you know Jordan came up shortly after that for uh, for the Lord's Supper. And, you know, there are several here um, who have been here from the time they were born. And Jordan is one of those. Jordan was born, I've known Jordan since he was born. And, you know, and, and he's come up through Cradle Roll and all of our classes downstairs and the teen class. And, and now he's helped with the teens. And so, and there are others that have done that too. And so one of the things that Jordan benefited from that really Zane is asking for is that we have good teachers who are willing to teach our children. And Jordan benefited from that, as many others have as well. And so uh, the quarter is kind of coming to an end for our classes downstairs. So Jeremy is seeking some others who are willing to teach our children. And as our attendance continues to grow and people come back, um, and are able to feel comfortable coming back. That means we have a number of more children who are here who have come back with their parents, which is great. We just need people who are able and willing to teach their classes downstairs. So uh, hopefully I made you feel uncomfortable, um, but I wanted to, wanted to mention that to you today. Um, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I hope that you were reminded of many things that God has blessed you with, and, and myself included, I know I was reminded of that. And, um, and so just, we have much, much to be thankful for every day. 
and uh, I just um, uh, appreciated the time that we had together with family, and I'm sure you did as well. I want to make one more quick announcement that just kind of let you know, those of you that have been here a while will know what I mean by saying that the giving tree is going to happen again this year. And the giving tree started in 1991, okay, so it's coming up on 30 years. Last year we weren't able to do it because of COVID, but basically what we've done as a congregation is we've adopted anywhere from one to several families in our area to really help them uh, because otherwise maybe they would not have um, uh, Christmas as they would like to have. And this is, this is separate from the God's Hand gift shop. I mean, literally we are adopting a specific family or families and we are helping them. So next week when you come, I say all that to say this, the tree will be out there, the tags will be out there, uh, and so we're going to be helping out one of our local families that really, really um, needs to have some help at Christmas time. So just want to mention that and uh, hope that uh, next week when you come that you'll stop by out there and um, we can start that, start that exciting thing as well. So, okay, in 2007, there was a Dutch builder who built a, a half-size replica of the Ark over in the Netherlands. And then about five years later, he built a full-size repl replica of the Ark there in the Netherlands as well in a small town. And so he did that, and, and that, was, that was pretty awesome that he was able to do that. Well, recently, within the last five years, I think 2016, an Ark was built here in the United States in Grant County, Kentucky. And the group that is known as Answers in Genesis, or AIG, is the group that, that constructed this replica of the ark that's talked about in the book of Genesis. And so some of you have been there, and, and it's on my bucket list to go there someday, uh, to just it, see it because I've heard it's, it's incredible. Well, in case you can't remember about the ark and the dimensions of the ark, uh, let me share those with you as we kind of begin some of my thoughts today. So the ark was built, was that God instructed Noah to build, was 300 cubits long. It was 50 cubits wide, and it was 30 cubits high. Now, we don't deal in cubits very much. I don't even know what one is, really. But if you converted that to kind of stuff that we would know, then basically it would be about 450 feet long which is about the size of a one and a half football fields. So if you've ever been to a football stadium, one and a half sizes, that's how long it was, is it would be 150 feet wide and it would be 45 feet tall. And so a pretty massive structure that God had instructed Noah to build. And, and, and why did he do that? Well, if we read in Genesis chapters six through nine, we find the story of Noah. And, and Noah and the ark is an account, a story, an account. I don't even like to use story because when we think of story, we think of something somebody made up. It's an account that we're familiar with. In fact, again, let me put a plug in. Probably many of us learned that in Bible class or in vacation Bible school from teachers who were teaching about Noah and the ark, which is all the more the reason to have teachers available to teach our children. Because what it is, is this, it's a story of faith. And so this morning I want us to look at this story where the Lord said to Noah to build an ark. Because what it talks about, both for Noah, as well as really for us today, is that we need to be living by faith. And God had Noah do that, he tested Noah. And Noah responded by being a faithful servant of God. And so that's what we're going to look at uh, a little bit today because I think it talks about, in talking about Noah's story, it really talks a lot about our own faith story and what our faith story individually should look like. The people in Noah's day were really wicked. I mean, really wicked. And, and the Bible says that, that God was, was in grief. He was filled with grief because of how wicked the world had become. In fact, it said that the, in the Bible that the world at Noah's time is described as corrupt and full of violence. Maybe that sounds a little bit like today. Uh, and as a result, God decided to destroy the world and everything in it. 
I mean, just wipe it out with a flood. And he instructed Noah to build this ark by those dimensions that I just mentioned. Um, and in, in Genesis uh, chapter 6, verse 9, it says this. It says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. So that's, that's who we're talking about today and who I think we can draw from his life and make it part of our story as well. And then beginning in, in verse 14 of chapter 6, it goes ahead and, and God gave Noah instructions on how to build the ark. He gave him those instructions about the dimensions and what to make the ark out of and, and what animals should go into the ark. And, and Jeremy read that a little bit ago. And, and even what food to bring and store in the ark. So then, as he did that, we find this in, in Genesis 6.22. After he gave, God gave Noah all those instructions, it says, it says, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. If only you and I could do that or would do that. In other words, whatever God commands us to do, we just did it. If we would do that. But you know, what happens is we like to put our own well, our own spin on things too many times. And so we want to talk about our faith story today and how, that, how we develop our own faith story. You see, the encounter of Noah is a great example of faith. It's a great example of the trust that he put in God and it's an example of him surrendering to, to God's will totally. And there's no indication if you read chapters 6 through 9 of Genesis where it says anything about Noah kind of deviating from God's plan. There's nothing in there that said, well, you know, Noah changed this up a little bit for personal preference, like, you know, Mrs. Noah wanted an extra window. You know, it doesn't say anything about that. Or, or no adjustment for opinion, like, well, you know, maple would look a lot better in here than gopher would. I mean, it's really pretty. It would be really nice to, to have that in our bedroom. Nothing like that was talked about. There was no details that were omitted, like, you know, do we have to make it 45 feet high or 30 cubits high? Could we just not cut it down a little? Nothing. <clears throat> he didn't question God. He didn't say to God, and it doesn't say in the Bible where he says, well, God, I've never heard of a boat being built that way. I mean, here's how you build a boat. I don't see that in the passage. I don't see anywhere in there where, where he even questioned things like to God, like, why are we doing this here in the middle of this dry ground? Why are we doing that, God? Or why now? Or what's a flood? None of those questions are accounted for in there because I don't believe they happened. Because it says Noah did everything just as God commanded him to do. So I want us to take a look at chapter 7 for a minute in verses 1 through 5. And it says this, it says, The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark you and your whole family, and, and in Jeremy, what he read earlier, it gave those whole family, there was eight people total, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, God's still talking, seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I've made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. There seems to be a theme there when it comes to Noah, obeying what God commanded him to do. Now, if you hadn't, if you've forgotten what I mentioned earlier about the situation there on earth where it caused God to be in grief and where everybody was corrupt and violent, well, in case you forgot that, do you think that this was easy for Noah? Why? Well, excuse me, while he's building this ark. Do you think that everybody was up there going, good job, Noah, way to go. Hey, we're with you. I don't think so. I imagine there'd be people out there going, hey, Noah, you're kind of a looney tune, and why are you doing that? Or, hey, Noah, when you get yours done, come build one at my house. <laughs> or maybe 
Noah, this God that you serve must be as crazy as you are. Or, hey, Shem, you know, your dad is a real nut job. What does he think he's doing? I mean, there isn't even enough water to float that thing. And I'm sure there was even worse comments that were made while Noah and his family were building this ark and following God's directions. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly how long it took him to build the ark. But, but I don't think he went to Cabello's and he got like a boat building kit. And he didn't go to Home Depot and just picked out some lumber. You know, Sid took him over there and, you know, here's what you need. I don't think he did that. In fact, I think what happened was, even though we know, don't know the exact time, that it consumed Noah and his family from the start to when God shut the door and had Noah and his family inside there. I want us to keep in mind <clears throat> that God is faithful to those who are obedient to him. And he was faithful to Noah. In fact, when we are living by faith, sometimes or all the time, what others may have ridiculed, God rewards. What others may have protested, God protected. And this is what happened specifically with Noah and his family. And what others may have disregarded, God delivered. I'm sure that those crowds that gathered came and they were like, you know, they, they couldn't believe what they were seeing and why, they were, why he was doing that. But God was faithful to Noah because Noah was obedient to God. Did Noah ever get discouraged? If he did, it wasn't to the point of disobeying God. Did Noah ever get, well, ever doubt? Well, if it did, it wasn't to the point of, of, of him failing to trust in God anymore. Did Noah ever get tired? Well, if it did, if he did, it wasn't to the point where he looked for an alternative source of power. He relied on God. He did what God asked. Jeremy read verses 11 through 16 of chapter 7. I just want to pick up a few more verses from there, beginning in, in verse 17. Remember, verse 16 ended with, the Lord shutting Noah and his family inside the ark. For 40 days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 20 feet. <clears throat> Every living thing that moved on the earth perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swam over the earth and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. Men and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds of the air were wiped from the earth only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. <clears throat> if you keep reading, beginning in chapter 8 of Genesis, it says, we read how the waters finally began to recede and the earth began to dry out. And, and we read that God remembered Noah and everything and everyone that was in the ark. And in verse 13, it talks about the first day of the first month of Noah's 601st year. When Jeremy read his passage, Noah was 600, so he's had a birthday. The water had dried up from the earth. And by the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. And it wasn't until then when God said to Noah, come out of the ark, and he and his family left the ark. Now, I don't know about you, but if my count is right, Noah and his family were in the ark pretty close to a year, or coming up on one. And if I had looked out the window in that first month and saw that the earth was dry, I'd have been out. Because I'd have had enough of, did you ever get cooped up with your family for a long time? <laughs> Noah's family was not only 
eight people in total, but a lot of really smelly animals, and I'm still not sure how that all worked out. But, <laughs> uh, but he was in there. But instead, he waited. He waited another month plus until God told him it was time to come out. Again, Noah did everything God commanded him to do. You know, God had told Noah it was God had told Noah it was time for him to to, to leave the ark. It was, he told him when it was time to go in the ark. He told him it was time to leave the ark. And Noah followed exactly what God had instructed him. And I wonder if we're that patient with God. If if we're that patient, or if you're like me and it's like I'm out of here, I'm not waiting for God to open the door. I'm gone. Are we that patient with God? Are we that trusting with God? The fact that, okay, I'm in this ark, I have no idea what it's supposed to do, and it's sitting on dry ground, and God's told me a few things, and now all of a sudden I'm looking outside the window, and man, it is, there's no earth left. It's all water. Are we that trusting that God is going to take care of us, as Noah was? And are we that selfless? In other words, we gave up any opinions we might have had or anything that we might have wanted differently in the case of Noah and just said, okay, God, use this how you want it. This is how I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to do exactly what you tell me from this day forward. We don't like to be told what to do, do we? We like to interject our own. But Noah did everything that God commanded him to do. And to me, that is faith. Yep. When Noah and his family exited the ark, Noah, I'm sure he was very grateful, and he offered these awesome sacrifices to God. And God was pleased with the sacrifices that he offered. And it talks about this in, in chapter 8, verses 21 and 22. God makes a promise to Noah at this point. He says, never again will I curse the ground because of humans even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. All the more reason to have teachers teach our children. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. So God is making this commitment not only to Noah, but to mankind and to all animals moving forward. And then in chapter 9, God restates, God restates his covenant, his promise, and it included a symbol. And all of us know what that is if we've learned it all from our Bible classes. What's the symbol of the promise that God made? Rainbow. A rainbow. And so if we see a rainbow, that should remind us that God's promise is still intact. He made that promise to Noah and to his family and to mankind and all creatures. It's that promise. And since, and I know you knew the story of Noah. I counted on that because I didn't tell you anything probably you didn't know. But, but here's what I want to challenge us with this morning. Have you built your ark yet? You're thinking, what? You know something I don't know? Have you built your ark yet? You see, the building of the ark was a testament of Noah's faith in God. It was an outward expression, really, of Noah's inward commitment to following God. God said, build the ark. Noah built the ark, exactly as God promised. God said, do this, and Noah said, Lord, I'm yours. Have you built your ark yet? I want to talk about that for just a second. You see, maybe, and I don't know this, maybe you're struggling with, with an illness of some kind. Maybe it's chronic. Maybe, maybe it's life-threatening, and, and you've been dealing with it, and, and maybe it's something you just found out about, or you've been dealing with it for a lot of years, but it's a challenge. All God wants you to do, really, he wants you to build an ark. He wants you to say to him, God, Take your arms and wrap them around me and take care of me. Just like you did Noah and his family. Put me inside your loving arms and protect me and help me get through this challenge that I'm facing. 
Maybe it's family strife that you're dealing with. Maybe it's that your kids are just, they're, they don't listen to you. Or your spouse isn't loving you. Or, or your bills continue to pile up. Or even if you have a job, it's, the, it's a stress ball. It's this constant stress in your life where you work. Don't lose hope. God is saying, build an ark. Let me wrap my arms around you and make that protective covering for you and your family. Perhaps, though, perhaps you're thinking on the totally opposite end and you're like, well, I don't want anything to do with that. I don't want anything to do with that. I don't want anything to do with God. I don't want anything to do with this ark stuff. I'm happy with my life the way it is. My question to you would be, really? Really? You see, those who inhabited the earth had that same thought process. With the exception of eight, they had the same process of thinking that I don't want anything to do with God. I don't want anything to do with doing the right thing. I don't want anything to do with being around this Noah guy. I don't want anything to do with any of that. And you know, the sad thing about that is this. There was a point where they probably started climbing the trees as the water started rising. And they started climbing up hills and mountains as the water started rising. And they probably swam as long as they could. And maybe even they pounded if they could on the side of the ark, hoping somehow somebody would throw them a lifeline. But the enjoyment of their wickedness became their reward. So this morning, a question in addition to have you built the ark is this. Are you in the ark or are you outside of the ark? Only eight souls were saved when the flood came. Only eight. Everyone else chose to be disobedient, chose to not put their faith in God. So are you in the ark or are you outside the ark? Are you, letting, are you allowing God to, to, to embrace you and put your faith in him? Are you still outside the ark trying to climb a tree and climb a mountain and knock on the side while you're still able to swim. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 6 and 7, it says this. It says, And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, build an ark to save his family. And by his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Noah had a choice, I guess. But his choice was pretty clear, was that he lived a life that God was his only choice. That obedience to God was his only choice. That faith in God was his only choice. He didn't care what people thought about him. He didn't care what people said about him. He didn't care that he was building this huge structure and, and nobody had ever done that before. And, and maybe he didn't even know what a flood was. He didn't care. He was doing what God said. So have you built your ark yet? Is your, is your life a reflection of your faith and your trust in God? Because that's what it was for Noah when he built his ark. It was, his it was his doing because of his faith and his trust in God. And have you placed yourself and your family and your future in God's hands? That's the ark I'm talking about for us today. It's allowing God to wrap his arms around us and around our family and just saying, you know, God, whatever you need me to do, I'm doing it. I'm not going to question you. I'm just doing it. But I want your arms wrapped around me. Because one, I don't swim very well. And I don't climb trees very well. 
And I know that if I stay outside of those loving arms, I'm going to be lost. If you haven't been obedient to those plans, if you haven't allowed God to wrap you up, then you are outside the ark. I would just encourage you to, to consider today, tomorrow, and the days to come, where are you? Are you in the ark or are you out? side of the ark and if you're outside how long are you going to last and what can you look forward to you know Jesus died and 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 Jordan read about that he died so that so that you and I and everyone could be inside the ark unfortunately not everybody chooses to do that matter of fact every day it gets more and more like the world that we read about in Genesis. But God hasn't given up on us. He hasn't given up on you or me. And he still wants more people to come inside his loving arms. So if you haven't done that today, I would just encourage you this week to think about what it's going to take for you to build your ark, to basically say to God, God, I want your arms wrapped around me so that I'll be protected. Let's stand together in this thing.